In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen, dearly beloved in Christ, and Father Emmanuel Aouya, and I'd like to share with you a touch of God's love. That's a short reflection and prayer on the Holy Mass readings of Sunday, 10th March, 2024. The readings are taken from 2 Chronicles 36, 14 to 16, 19 to 23, Psalm 136, 106, Ephesians 2, 4 to 10, and John 3, 14 to 21. The theme of the reflection is how to rise from death. <coughs> how to rise from death. The first reading says, all the heads of the priesthood and the people too added infidelity to infidelity copying all the shameful practices of the nations and defiling the temple that the lord had consecrated for himself in jerusalem the lord the god of their ancestors tirelessly sent them messenger after messenger since he wished to spare his people in his house. But they ridiculed the messengers of God. They despised his ways. They laughed at his prophets until the last, until at last the wrath of the Lord rose so high against his people that there was no further remedy. Their enemies burnt down the temple of God, demolished the walls of Jerusalem, set fire to all his palaces, and destroyed everything of value in it. The survivors were deported by Nebuchadnezzar to Babylon. They were to serve him and his sons until the kingdom of Persia came to power. This is how the word of the Lord was fulfilled that is spoke to Jeremiah, until this land has enjoyed its Sabbath rest, until 70 years have gone by, it will keep Sabbath throughout the days of its desolation. And in the first year of Cyrus, king of Persia, to fulfill the word of the Lord that was spoken to Jeremiah, the Lord roused the spirit of Cyrus, king of Persia, to issue a proclamation and to have it publicly displayed throughout his kingdom. Thus speaks Cyrus, king of Persia. The Lord, the God of heaven, has given me all the kingdoms of the earth. He has ordered me to build him a temple in Jerusalem, in Judah. Whoever there, there is among you, of all his people, May his God be with him. Let him go up. And the second reading says, God loved us with so much love that he was generous with his mercy. When we were dead through our sins, he brought us to life with Christ. It is true grace that you have been saved and raised up and raised us up with him and gave us a place with him in heaven in Christ Jesus. This was to show for all ages to come through his goodness towards us in Christ Jesus how infinitely rich he is in grace because it is by grace that you have been saved through faith not by anything of your own, but by a gift from God. Not by anything that you have done, so that nobody can claim the credits. We are God's work of art, created in Christ Jesus to live the good life, as from the beginning He had meant us to live it. As from the beginning He had meant us to live it. He has meant He had meant us to live it. And then the Gospel says, Jesus said to Nicodemus, The Son of Man must be lifted up as Moses lifted up the serpent in the desert. The Son of Man must be lifted up as Moses lifted up the serpent in the desert, so that everyone who believes may have eternal life in him. Yes, God loved the world so much that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not be lost, but may have eternal life. 
Well, God sent His Son into the world not to condemn the world, but so that through Him the world might be saved. No one who believes in Him will be condemned, but whoever refuses to believe is condemned already, because he has refused to believe in the name of God's only Son. On this God's sentence pronounced that though the light has come into the world, men have shown their preferred darkness to the light because their deeds were evil. And indeed, everybody who does wrong hates the light and avoids it for his actions for fear his actions should be exposed. But a man who lives by the truth comes out into the light so that it may be plainly seen that what he does is done in God. Beloved, the first reading shows that though God sent prophet upon prophet to the people of Israel to call them to repentance, they continue to sin and defile the temple of Jerusalem. As a result, God allowed the Babylonians to enslave them. However, God intervened in the 70th year to free them. He did that in the Jubilee year or sabbatical year to show that he was being gracious to them. That is giving them a favor they did not deserve. An, a, an anniversary, time of anniversary, or a sabbatical or jubilee time. It's a time of grace. So God was trying to show that it was just grace. They didn't deserve it. However, He did not just free them for nothing, but to go and rebuild the temple. That is their relationship with Him, in order not to be enslaved again. Especially they were to build their personal relationship with Him, in order not to be enslaved by sin, which is a worse enslavement than the political enslavement. It implies that if God did not intervene, they would never be freed from slavery. That means they, would, they were at least uh, politically dead. And uh, if they were also living in mortal sin, then they were spiritually dead. And if they were never freed, then they would have been dead spiritually forever. Those who agreed and rebuilt the temple and their relationship with God rose from that death. They rose from death. The second really shows that what God did for the Israelites through King Cyrus, God has now done for all people through Jesus Christ. Through our sins, we are all spiritually dead because we cannot free ourselves from sin by our human ability. We, are, we cannot free ourselves. But out of mercy and grace, God sent Jesus to free us. Grace means free gifts and we cannot claim any credit for our freedom, but our obtaining it, that is our rising from death or from mortal sin, is based on our personal faith, which is itself a free gift from God. All we have to do is to receive, but that is not easy. Receiving is not easy. How do we even receive? The Gospel then tells us, how to receive. It says anyone who does not believe is condemned because though light has come, people prefer darkness. But those who live by truth live in the light. It means that though Christ has come to set us free, many of us do not live in Him. He has come, but we don't live in Him because we prefer mortal sin to overcome that weakness. The only remedy is to live in Him through prayer, fasting, and deeds of love. 
Hence the church gives us length to enable us to rise from our spiritual death by living in Christ. To be able to live by the truth, that is, by the will of God, or to be able to rise from death, the remedy is to try our best to live in Christ. To try our best to live in Christ, who is the light, by trying our best to pray, fast, and do deeds of love. No matter how difficult it is, God is looking at our effort. Failure to make any efforts implies that we prefer darkness to light. But if we make some efforts and persevere in making efforts, no matter the difficulty, God will help us out. Dearly beloved, in the name of Jesus, receive the grace to always prefer light to darkness. In the name of Jesus, you will rise from any death in which you are. Amen. I share God's love by subscribing to this YouTube channel and share or discussing this message with others. The subscription is free. The icon for subscription is at the bottom corner of the right side of the video. May Almighty God bless and protect you always, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen.